Bro Frederick coming at you with another episode of Hey Bro Frederick. Right now I am leaving the Las Vegas welcome sign because I just did an amazing live down here. You can go check that out. But on today's episode, I'm going to answer a question that I get all the time. Sometimes it's directed at me, sometimes it's a general question. But the question goes, whoa, there's traffic today and a beautiful sunset. So the question goes like this. Hey, bro, Frederick, you give us all the tips on gaming, and why don't you just play slot machines for a living? And the other question that I get, which is related, hey, bro, Frederick, can someone make a living playing slot machines? Now, I'm going to expand that to include table games and gaming in general, but we'll talk about slot machines. So the question of the day is, can you make a living playing slot machines in Las Vegas? And we're going to discuss that right after this. Welcome back again. My name is Brower Frederick, local Las Vegas-based photographer, videographer, cinematographer, and part-time philosopher. And I welcome you to hit that like, share, subscribe, hit the bell button to get notified when I do lives, which I did an amazing one today, and we went to the Pinball Hall of Fame that you see in the right-hand corner there. That was awesome, so come join the Brower Nation. So before I get into whether you can make a living playing slots or any other game here in Las Vegas, let me tell you a story. One day, there was a guy. He was minding his own business and mowing his lawn. And he hears a voice say, sell everything you have and move to Vegas. Looks around, maybe his, his neighbor's pranking him. I don't know. Goes back to mowing his lawn, thinks nothing of it. Next Sunday, he's out mowing his lawn again, and he hears, sell everything you have and move to Vegas. Again, he's looking in the bushes. Oh, what's going on here? Doesn't think anything of it. This happens another three or four times, and on like the fifth time, he hears, sell everything you have and move to Vegas. He goes, hmm goes and sells everything he has, moves to Vegas. So he gets to Vegas, doesn't know why he's in Vegas, but he's got all this money, he sold everything he had, here he's in Vegas. And then he's sitting at the buffet at Circus Circus and he hears, take all the money and put it on black. Hmm doesn't think anything of it, wants a little confirmation, that seems a little crazy, right? So then, he's in town, he's at another buffet, he's doing his thing over at the MGM, he hears, take all that money and put it on black. This happens three or four times as he's staying at the, the, the budget suites, right? So then he finally hears it for like the fifth or sixth time, take all that money and put it on black. So he takes all that money, goes into the nearest casino, and puts it on black. The croupier spins the wheel, spins the little ball, comes out red. Guy hears a little voice. Little voice says, shit. Enough of that. Let's get into the topic at hand, which is, can you make a living playing slots? Or can I, Bro Frederick, with my knowledge of slots, play for a living and make a living playing slots or table games here in Las Vegas? Instead of this being a yes or a no, I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to ask you some questions. If you could answer these questions honestly, the answer might be yes or it might be no. So, question number one, how much discipline do you have? Do you have the discipline that it takes? Now, bear in mind, before we get this conversation started, that slot machines and table games are designed for two things. One, 
to take your money, two for entertainment. Some people switch it the other way, but that's the way I like to look at it. <clears throat> they're designed to take your money and they're designed to provide entertainment in exchange for that money, for the most part. So, do you have the discipline that it takes? And you guys know, and you can see in the playlist and the link in the description and at the end of the video, that it requires mega discipline to survive in any gaming environment, this town or any other town. And in life, you need discipline, discipline, discipline. But you need Vegas level discipline to survive here. Do you have Vegas level discipline? Let me give you an example. Do you have down the concept of sessions? Do you know if you were gonna make a business out of this and make a living out of playing, of gambling here in Las Vegas, would you break it down into sessions? Would you say, okay, here I am, it's Monday, I have X amount of dollars, I'm gonna have four sessions, I'm gonna have two crap sessions, and I'm gonna go play the Buffalo three times. Buffalo! Would you call it quits after that, whether you won or lost? If you had a losing day, if everything did not go in your favor, would you walk away or would you walk back to the ATM? Would you be satisfied going home and sitting down and watching TV or doing whatever else you had to do without a gut sick feeling that you lost or that you had to come back and get that money somehow and reach back into your bankroll? Do you have that level of discipline? Do you have the level of discipline that suppose you put $200 in a machine in the Buffalo, in the Lightning Links, in the Wheel of Fortune, whatever it is. And if you ran that up to 300 or 275 in 10, 15 minutes, would you quit? Would you quit? Would you say, I just made $75, I just made $100 in 10 minutes? Would that be enough for you? Could you consistently do that? Can you drop a hundred in a machine on the first spin, hit a line hit and have it go up to 142.45? Would you cash that out for a $40 profit in one minute? Could you do that? Or would you sit and insist on playing more? See, that's if everyone cashed out while they were ahead this town would look like it was still back in the 70s, but nobody cashes out when they're ahead. Can you do three sessions in a day? Okay, I, I got up, I got up, okay, I'm cashing out. Oh, up on this session, I'm cashing out. Down a little on this session, cashing out. Could you do that? Could you maintain your discipline doing that on a daily basis? You have to ask yourself that because that's what it takes sometimes. Making $100 in five minutes is pretty freaking good. There's not a lot of people on this planet that do that, you know, other than the obvious, uh, you know, Amazon, but the average person doesn't get the opportunity to do that. Could you walk away with a $62 profit that you made in a half hour playing a specific machine and go do something else or go have another session? Do you have that level of discipline because if you don't have that level of discipline, if your mind is just like, I'm up, you know, I put in 200, I'm up 100, I have 300 bucks here, I'm gonna still keep playing. Now, suppose you played that down to 200 and you say, well, I broke even. No, you lost your earnings for the day. Do you have that level of discipline in your life? If the answer is yes, then maybe you could. If the answer is no, then maybe you can't. So let's get on to another question. Do you have picking out the proper slot machines or the proper games, but let's talk about slot machines for a second. Do you have selecting them down to a science, whether my system or anyone else's system, how to pick the proper slot machine? Or does any slot machine catch your eye? Not all slot machines are created equal. Some of them are absolutely horrendous. Some of them are good. You have to become an expert in a given slot machine. 
that way you know what to expect from that slot machine, how it sort of plays. Yes, it's random and all that, but all machines fall into cycles. Do you have the expertise at given slot machines that you know whether it's, it's in a good cycle and a bad cycle? Do you know when to get up? For instance, the Mistress of Egypt pays you fast and furious at the very beginning and then drains you right afterwards. It is, I can prove that. I have videos showing it. I, I played that machine so many times, so I limit my sessions on Mistress of Egypt games to right away, if it lets me get up, I am gone. Do you have that level of discipline? Do you know the machines well enough? Do you know the buffalo well enough? Do you know what machine and at what level? And oh, let's try 60, let's try 120, let's try 180, let's try 240, let's try three. Not like that. Sometimes the bet makes a difference. Let's get into another question. Do you have the bankroll that can sustain it? It requires quite a significant bankroll to game with, whether it's table games or any other game. Do you have that kind of money sitting around to withstand a month of a down cycle, a week of a down cycle, a weekend of a down cycle? Would, uh, if you had a good up day and you hit a, a major or a grand for seven or $8,000, would you be able to put that aside and say, okay, that's my earnings for the month. Now I'm gonna go back to playing a dollar twenty. Do you have that? Do you have that type of mentality? And do you have that type of bankroll? And when I talk about the ups and downs and knowing specific machines and how they play, I'm gonna give you an example of that too. Now, I know for a fact that in the win, which we're passing now, and I might even go play right now, in the win, there are four specific buffalo machines, which tends to be my specialty, because I know that machine very, very, very well. There's four in there that are very, very well-paying machines. I can pretty much count on them. I'm not guaranteed to win every time I'm on them, but I have a very good chance of it. Those are the high percentage machines. Some are set at different percentages. There's four that are high percentage machines, and there's a couple of other decent percentage machines in there. Recently, I noticed that they change the machines. They don't stay that way forever. The casinos know that people figure it out, whether they have a system of recognizing which machines pay well, whether they're friends, whether I told you about it, hey, play this one by the bathroom, the one facing away, but you know what I'm saying? They know that people figure it out. And sometimes it's just through punishment. If you put $100 in one machine and it kicks your ass, you put it in another machine, it kicks your ass, you put it in another machine, it kicks your ass, you put it in another machine, and, you know, you hit a, a Roman Buffaloes that, you know, makes up for all of it, which machine are you going to play? You're going to go back to the one that you won at, and most likely that's a high percentage machine, or in your brain it is. So by just elimination people find the good machines in the casinos even if they don't have a system now it hits a few pain points before they get there obviously but the effect is the same so the casinos they move these machines around every once in a while now i keep track of the numbers but a lot of the numbers they put on the machines they change those too because they're inventory control numbers. They have nothing to do with gaming commission whatsoever. Sometimes they could just change them completely via gaming. So the gaming commission. So now at the win, I have to go through the process of reevaluating the floor, finding out where they put these machines. Did they just remove them off the floor completely? How much am I willing to, to invest? Because now I have to pay with my bankroll to find out where these high percentage machines are now put. If they took them off the floor off the floor completely, I'm just donating at this point. And the casinos will throw you for a loop once in a while like that. That's why I say, you know, you have to find the machines, but they don't sit there forever. And that's also the reason 
I do not say, hey, play this machine, hey, play that machine, because I don't want to be responsible. I'll teach you how to find them, and I have, and even in lives, I've pointed out ones that have, that have done well, but I am not going to sit and say, you know, this specific slot machine is going to do great for you, and put it on camera, you know, and say, this is the one, this is the buffalo, because I don't want to be responsible for when the casino moves said machine and hey, bro Frederick told me to play this machine and I lost my kid's college fund. I don't want to hear that. That's on you. So I'm not going to tell you a specific machine. I'll tell you how to find them. But you have to be able to have that type of sustainability. So one, do you have the bankroll? Two, do you know how to pick the machines and know how the machines play? And number three, do you have the discipline, which is more important than anything else? Now, if you do have those things, all three of them, it's possible. I don't know what kind of living because the bet amount's gonna change. A line hit at 60 cents is completely different at a lot than a line hit at six bucks, obviously, but the bankrolls are gonna be different. So do you have the discipline? So you have to ask yourself, those three questions and you will find out if you can make a living playing playing craps playing whatever other table game here in las vegas now there's one other avenue which we'll discuss real quick because people ask me all the time because i do it myself can you make a living playing slot machines on youtube so the question is, again, it depends. There are some people who are making very, very good livings. Slot machines, slot machine play videos is in, uh, it's not in a great category, but it's in an above average category in terms of what advertisers are willing to pay because people tend to watch them very long and people who tend to watch slot machine videos have sort of addictive personalities to begin with, so they know that you know they're getting their ads in front of the right audience but here's the thing with that like i said some people are doing very well uh but here's the couple of caveats that i would say about that for the most part people like to see uh you know high bets you know i do some low roll videos i'm not doing a video over three dollars per spin because i can never i mean i'm not going to recoup a loss anyway on a machine because some of these people I see out there, 15, 30, 60, 75 dollars a spin. I've seen them all. You know who these people are. So are they making that up on the videos? I mean, it's possible on certain levels, but here's the thing. You're not gonna you're not gonna make back or make a living at it until you got a reasonable audience. And most audiences want to see high rolling to get that audience started. But if you start slow, build up a, a following with low rolling within your budget, you might be able to do it. But don't be a D and show only the wins. Show everything. Show the wins, the losses, the highs, the lows. Talk to the people. So it is possible to make a living or a career out of doing slot machine videos on YouTube. But until you get to you know several thousand people, it's not gonna be that big. Now, could you be the next NG? Can you be the next slot lady with 200,000 subscribers? I'm sure she's doing well. Um, if you feel you can, go for it. You should feel, anything you do in life, you should feel like you can be the best and do the best at it, so go for it. But I'll add one other caveat to this, which is, I don't know how long YouTube is going to be supporting gambling videos on their platform because they've slowly but surely done away with alcohol reviews, even fine scotches and wines they've demonetized. Sure, you can still put videos up and you can still sell your product, but as far as ad revenue, you're not gonna get any in those categories. Firearms, uh, yeah, you know, you're talking about gambling. So firearms, tobacco, pipe tobacco reviews, you know, basically demonetize. Now, if you're selling pipe tobacco, links in the description, yeah, you can still make some money, but the advertisers won't touch you with a 10-foot pole. So how long will it be in this 
environment of, uh, let's call it, well, let's call it what it is, political correctness and cancellation, that gaming videos, gambling videos are going to be around. You got to see the writing on the wall. Now, you might say, hell, let me just, you know, let me just get on it while the getting's good. And me personally, I've got on it while the getting's good. You see me put them out once or twice a week, but it's an adjunct to what I'm already doing and I'm already teaching and the whole vibe that I have on my channel. So, you know, if they decide to say, hey, you know, no more gaming, it's not going to hurt me. But if you've put in, you know, thousands of hours investing your time and building a channel and suddenly you wake up in the morning and they tell you, guess what? You know, you're not getting paid from us anymore. What are you going to do? Just saying. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but you just have to think about these things just like in any other business. So I hope I answered that question whether you can make a living gambling. Oh, let me get back to one thing. One thing that I know you can make a living at gambling is poker. Live poker, and live poker is coming back to this town big. I know people who've made, who haven't even done anything else in their lives. No McDonald's, no straight job in their entire existence except play poker. I know for a fact, if you're a good poker player, you can make a living, I, whether you can in Vegas or not, because it's a little different here. You know, there's a lot of like pros. The, um, you know, there's more sharks at the tables than fish like it used to be back in the day when, you know, everyone at their country club thought they were the best poker player and they were going to come down and break Vegas. And me and all my sharky friends would, you know, <laughs> we'd, we'd take them to, you know, we'd, you know, we'd gobble up their money because they weren't as good as they thought. You know, they won the tournament at the charity event at the country club, but they weren't ready for Vegas. But you can make a living playing poker in this town. So we're driving in circles now, so I hope I, you enjoyed these views. Look at that beautiful sky today. Tons of people in town, and this is a Tuesday afternoon. So again, I hope you enjoyed it. I appreciated you coming around. If you want to support the channel, you can go ahead and do that. Click on any of the links in the description below. I got everything in there from the underwear that I wear to the books that I read, and they'll all do you right. And if you want to get a channel membership or a Patreon membership, I would greatly appreciate the support. And I look forward to another episode of Hey Bro Frederick soon. If you have any suggestions for an episode, go ahead and drop that in the comments. And I want to hear from you and your experiences too. And on that note, Bro Frederick out.